Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Women's College Gymnastics in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is round one of the Southeast Regional Qualifications on the way to the National Championship. We've got a great meet lined up for you today. The North Carolina Tar Heels versus the Tigers from Towson. Real quick, just because the play-in is still a little bit new for our viewers, we're gonna take a look. Tomorrow, there are going to be two sessions of eight teams, and there you see at the bottom, the winner of this meet between Towson and UNC is going to take on the other three individuals already slated for session two, uh, which will also be round two. You are floor side. I'm Rachel Garland alongside my co-host, Christina Chauvinet and Christina, this is going to be a great matchup. Let's talk a little bit more about Towson and Carolina and what to expect this afternoon. Well, I am so excited. This meet could really go either way. Their national qualifying scores are separated by less than a half a tenth. So these two teams have been back and forth all season. Towson did better at Eagle Championships last week, but UNC could definitely take it as well. So it's going to come down to the wire. Absolutely. And one thing we talked about just a little bit, UNC ending on the vent that caused them a little bit of trouble. But let's take a real quick look here at some of Towson's top performers. Here you see Clara Hong, second team all eagle on three events. Big expectations out of her. Yeah, you know, she just has really classic lines, great toe point, has that great double front on uh, bars, great twisting form on floor. So she has been one of those freshmen come in, really contributed a lot to them. Absolutely. And another first team all eagle on vault, which we will see just here in a little bit, is Camille Vitoff. Starting off the lineup for Towson, this is Jenna Wheats that we just saw a nice layout your chinko full. Yeah, you know, this Towson team, the vault was not their strong suit at the recent Eagle Championships. You know, we mentioned they finished second to George Washington, got a really solid just over 196, but their vault landings weren't quite there. I talked to Coach Ramirez about that. Actually, they do not vault onto hard landings in their gym at all. So he said, you know, sometimes the landings are a little bit tricky. They are going for two 10.0 vaults at the end of their lineup, though, today. Absolutely, and we'll be very excited to see those like we took a look earlier. Camille Vitoff, one of those 10.0s, and uh, very excited to see that in the lineup. Moving over to the uneven bars, we've got Jamie Shearer in the leadoff spot. And I believe Jamie Shearer has actually already gone. I believe they were wow. they were going as we saw that vault from Genoese. There so we go. not sure if we are going to be alternating or just going straight through here. That is a great question. It actually looks like they might be competing the same time. So not like a typical dual meet that we have done in the past. Yes. We'll just go back to back. This is Nikki Borkowski. Came in just a little short there on that Yurchenko pull. I think she was trying to go for the landing just a little bit too much, um, but, but nice in the air. Absolutely. And like you said, Coach Ramirez, they're just looking for a couple extra tents here and there for these vault landings. We'll take another quick look at this. Yeah, didn't get the block, the push off the table that she needed to really get that um, in the ideal landing position. Absolutely, big things that they're looking for on vault. Height, distance, dynamics, and that one was lacking in a few of those areas. All right, so there you see UNC ready for the uneven bars. This should be Kate Green. Yeah, and Kate Green, we've seen a lot of progress from her this season. Had a minor ankle injury at the beginning of the season, but has really come into her own on bars. That full turn into the Tkachev. Oh, you know, she was lacking some amplitude on that Tkachev. And just, did, just couldn't quite get that um, around. So we'll take just a few seconds here. She does have 30 seconds to remount the event once the fall happens. But that's a tough situation. You know, second up, um, Jamie Shear did have a hit in that first position, but the rest of the lineup is in a, is in a must-hit must hit situation. Yep, you see that 9725. So that's Jamie Shearer's score that has already come in. And again, as, as with all season, one fall is not going to hurt, but this was what UNC found themselves in on beam at the Eagle Championship, and they ended up having to count a couple of falls. Nice dismount there, good fight to recover, but that's a tough start for UNC. Absolutely. Hoping the rest of the lineup 
will be able to pick it back up. We're going to take a look at the vault that just happened. This is Elise Tisler. And a nice Yurchenko full, better chest position on that landing. Absolutely, followed immediately by Lauren Bolin. Wow, that was the best Yurchenko full they've had really in control of that landing there. Those, those two landings have by far been the best that Towson has seen this season. And like you said, when you don't practice on a hard floor, it may take you all season to figure out how to actually compete and land on, I mean, we're on a basketball floor with a couple of mats on top. Absolutely. And you're looking at, you're looking at Cami Vitoff there. You know, she is, um, who is about to go on vault. She is vault, one of those that is vaulting that one and a half. I saw her struggle with it in warmups, but in the touch warmup, she uh, got it around fine. So this is a critical moment in the meet because for both teams, actually, on UNC, you've got uh, trying to recover from that bars fall on vault, getting set here with Cami Vitoff. Um, you have her doing the one and a half, um, which is starts out of that 10.0. So if she can get a good landing, this is going to be great for Towson. And she's hit it in practice. Didn't quite stick that, but really nice body position in the air. Landed really upright. Absolutely. And such a confidence boost as well. Yes. I know that was one thing that Coach Ramirez was going over. She hits four for four all the time in practice. But there is a difference in putting it in front of those judges. And it looked like a little still, she was shocked on the landing. Yeah, and you know, might have just been a little bit rattled from not quite hitting it right in um, warm-ups. And we're going to see, the exciting thing is, we're going to see in that anchor spot for that Mia Davis, who has been competing a full this season, she's upgrading to a one and a half. Perfect time in the season to put that in. Absolutely. So we've got the final competitor on vault, Mia Davis. Absolutely no uh, exhibitions in the regional and national competition, so we will not worry about that. And uh, Brianna Greenlow will be up next for the Tar Heels on the uneven bars. And she's got her big release off the top here, this dinger. Some leg separation, but made that connection to the low bar. And Mia Davis going for her one and a half. Oh, just does the full. Okay. It looked a little off. I'm not going to lie. When I saw her hands hit the table, I was a little nervous if she was going to throw that yeah. one and a half or not. So might have just decided, you know, like I said, saw her warm up the one and a half, but maybe just decided wasn't um, wasn't the right. I mean, she's so powerful. Really nice Absolutely. dynamics in that full. We'll take a look here. And you can see, I think, coming onto the table, she just yeah, she was not a little off. Yeah, maybe a little far back and not quite square. But wow, really good awareness for her to turn. Because she, she probably would have sat that one and a half down. Absolutely. So. She probably just decided, and, and that's going to be a good score for them. Will replace. They had a 9-6 earlier in the rotation, so that will replace it. Yeah. And there's a quick look at their head coach, Jay Ramirez. And Jay Ramirez, the Eagle Coach of the Year for the second year in a row. Rachel, I know you and I have both been really impressed with what he's done. And, you know, when we talked to him about it, one of the things I think that makes him a great leader is as soon as we asked him about it, he said, you know, I wish I could have shared that with Ashley Sauer, my assistant coach. She's done great work on bars and, I mean, on beam and floor um, with these athletes. But, you know, Jay, what I really like about uh, Jay Ramirez is he sets the bar really high for his team. He wants, he's pushing even more upgrades for next season, wants to start six 10.0 vaults next year. Absolutely. He has, he has really Really big expectations and the team I mean the team really gets behind him absolutely which is fantastic and again he's only been the head coach for three seasons he's been Eagle coach of the year two out of those three yeah. seasons so Pretty I think good it record. Just, I think it just goes to show that he is making huge strides with this Tigers program yeah, making their second straight regionals berth after a 20-year drought. So, you know, I think this is certainly, we've said, a program on the rise. And speaking of a program on the rise, looking at Dana Durante there in her first season as head coach, taking UNC to, leading UNC to the regional championships for the first time since 2017. Absolutely. And, and the, the Tar Heel program has been under kind of a little bit of flux over the last few years. And this year under Coach Durante, I mean, you can see it just in the team and the passion in their caliber of gymnastics that they are ready to step their game back up. All right, so this is Julia Noer. And hits her dinger there as well. Again, some leg separation. Nice handstand on the low bar though. And she can really put this full twisting double back into the rafters. She's so powerful. Let's see if she can stick it. 
oh, you know, just needed to sink her heels in <laughs> a little bit. Stick. Yeah, exactly. She Polished just kind of step saluted out of that. Um, but, you know, really good routine. They're getting that momentum back. Absolutely. And rather than taking a, a full tenth on that, they'll, they'll probably take a half ten. Yeah. Again, not quite the stick. Uh, Towson is done on the vault, so we won't see any more of those. But let's take another look at this dismount. Yeah, huge height. You know, she was just so a little close. on her toes. Yeah. And she is one of those, as we mentioned, qualifier in all around. So if UNC does not advance, she will compete in the first semifinal tomorrow. If UNC does advance, she will compete with her team in the second semifinal. Absolutely. Always kind of an interesting spot on, am I going as an individual yeah. or am I going as a team? And Certainly for these teams in the round one, because the individual qualification carries you to round two, round two is where individual qualification scores count to making it towards nationals. Absolutely. We've got two more individuals on the uneven bars, Elizabeth Schaefer, sorry, Schaefer and Elizabeth Colton. Yeah, Isabel, Isabel Schaefer. Schaefer. There we go. Lots of gymnasts going on here. Tonight. Lots of gymnasts, and Isabel yeah. and Elizabeth apparently are tongue twisters for me. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this is, you know, I, she's very uh, capable on this event. One of the other first years coming in uh, for Coach Durante and really has nice lines on bars. It does take the judges a little bit longer to calculate some of the bar reductions more so than vaults, uh, but we, it looks like we are ready to go. And look at this toe point, really nice. She was a little shy on that handstand though. Beautiful Jaeger, nice toe point throughout. Yeah, just has been shy on a couple of these handstands, so that will add up. Remember, these athletes get a 10 degree margin of error when they're casting up to handstand, 20 if they're doing it in a pirouetting element. Wow, drills that land. <laughs> you can see they, um, Coach that Amelia Hundley. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt there. Coach Amelia Hundley, first year assistant coach for UNC, of course, fans remember her from her elite days and her decorated Florida gymnastics career. but. Um, she has really made an impact on this UNC team. And I really think that this UNC coaching staff, we as we're looking at the dismount here from Schaefer, really nice legs together in the air. And that's what you want to see. The chest is up. Absolutely no movement of the feet there. Textbook perfect. Exactly. And can we also just shout out all female coaching team at UNC? You got Coach Durante. You know, you talked about the fluctuation in coaching over the last couple seasons. Uh, Derek Galvin, the longtime coach, retired. Marie Case Denick, who had been an assistant coach, associate head coach, was the interim head coach last season. Now she is an associate head coach. So she's really been the bridge um, for those teams, has done a great job um, and in that position. And she and Dana and um, Amelia Hunley have all been working really well together. Dana Durante really speaks so highly of her coaching staff, and the assistant coaches got Eagle coaching coaches of Eagle assistant coaches of the year. So we've got all the Eagle coaching awardees here in this round one meet. Absolutely. Pretty cool. <laughs> yes. Great coaching staff. And again, it's it's really anyone's match today. The, these two teams are so evenly paired. And this is just gorgeous. Elizabeth Colton is just textbook on bars. Look at this stalter work. I love her line. To the Tkachev. Beautiful. Now let's see if she can keep her legs together on this bail. Teeny tiny <laughs> separation. Yeah. Um, and she's going to show off that stall to work. You are allowed to repeat the stalter in combination, which she's doing right here into the double back. Wow. Drills the landing. I saw her stuck a couple, a couple during warm ups. Um, so I, I was really hopeful that she would get that stick as well. She did a couple that she had to take that step on, just over rotated them. But that was a gorgeous bar routine. And again, being able to drop that fall earlier in the lineup is really what these Tar Heels needed. And yeah, just, she just has this beautiful technique on the stalters. A lot of people's stalter work looks a little forced or they can't quite get up in a handstand. For um, Colton, it looks so easy. And that, as you said, really critical because that score isn't updated on your screen yet. But when it comes in, you're going to see um, UNC and Towson really neck and neck. Absolutely. So that concludes our first rotation.
We will come back and we're going to flip flop. UNC will be headed to the vault. Towson will be on the uneven bars. We've got the scores in the bottom of your screen there. They have not been added with Elizabeth Colton's score, so those will update. But we'll be back in just a few moments with the Raleigh Regional on ESPN+. Plus.
Welcome back inside Reynolds Coliseum in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is women's college gymnastics. This is the Southeast Regional Round One, a dual competition between Towson and UNC. We've had a great lineup so far. And again, just as a reminder, we are doing the the Towson UNC meet at the bottom of your screen. The winner of today's competition will go on to round two, which will be tomorrow and compete against Michigan, UCLA, Maryland for a fight to the final round of the regional conference on their way to the national championship in just a couple of weeks. Let's take a, just a quick highlight uh, as far as UNC finished up on the uneven bars for round one, or for rotation one, Towson on the vault. Christina, just tell us a little bit back and forth. Right now, Towson's got a little bit of an advantage. Yeah, and you know, I got to say, I think Elizabeth Colton in that anchor spot, 985, that's a little low for me. Um, there was a split. Judges were high as 995 and as low as 98. So um, I probably would have had that around a 99. But yeah, you know, advantage Towson in my mind right now because UNC is moving to vault, which is statistically their um, lowest ranked event. They have a couple of 9-9 start values in that lineup. Um, and, you know, we'll see what Towson can do on bars. They are, there have been some lineup changes though. Steph Mikasu, who usually is a great contributor for them on bars and beam, had a beam fall. They are sitting her out as a precaution, hoping that she'll be back tomorrow. But that does mean that, um, you know, you will see uh, Amy Stewart, who has not typically been in the bar lineup competing. They had a good vault rotation, not their absolute best. I've seen them be cleaner on those vaults. Um, but, you know, again, I think that the advantage is to them right now, given that they already are um, ahead by two and a half tens. Absolutely. And while two and a half tens does not seem like a lot in gymnastics, that is a fairly significant difference. So, a lot of gymnastics left, though. A lot of gymnastics left. Absolutely. And, and as you can see, anyone, anyone can have a mishap. Uh, UNC covered it up great without having to count a fall. Lauren Keener. Uh, competed for the Tigers on the uneven bars. We're taking a look at Kate Green on vault for the Tar Heels. A nice Ruchenko full. Again, she really is peaking at the right time, has improved the dynamics on that Yurchenko full. Didn't quite get the stick, but a nice shape in the air. Absolutely, and just that tiny shuffle of the feet on the landing. Yeah, pike down, I can see, and the judges will see that. Obviously, they're sitting off to the side, so she'll get some deduction for that, but nice start overall. Absolutely, and I, I believe this is Lauren Keener. I think the gymnast before was final warm-up spot, but it looked like a final, it looked like a full routine. And gearing up for this nice Jaeger overshoot combo. Beautiful handstand on top of the bar. Great work so far. Biggest deduction is that big release move on the high bar was a little bit close. But yeah, other but than that, it was a great routine. Great routine. I love how she goes for those handstands. Has been the, um, one of the Eagle rookies of the week um, and has just made such a great impact on this Towson team. Isabel Schaefer up for the Tar Heels. And she's competing a tucked full. That's one of those vaults that starts out of the 9-9. Nice chest position on landing, little hop. Um, but yeah, solid job. You know, for UNC, uh, UNC fans will know that uh, both Hallie Thompson and Lolly Dekanoitsa uh, were slated to be all-arounders for them this season. They are have both been out for injury. So Isabel Schaefer, one of those athletes, stepping into that lineup spot. Nice job, but again, just a half a tenth that they're um, that she's that it is lower than the fulls. Absolutely, and that half a tenth does make a big difference. So great vault. It was very clean. Yeah but it's not going to get the big scores that those 10.0 vaults are going to get. Yeah, and you know, you talk, we talk about sort of with, with Lolly Dekanoitsa in the lineup earlier this season, you know, she was competing a one and a half. So that was a 10.0 vault that she was consistently scoring in the high 9.8s, low 9.9s. But what I like about this UNC team is the grit that they have shown. These athletes have been stepping up into the lineup. Absolutely. Camille Vitoff for the Tigers, and then on the right of your screen, Emery Sumi for the Tar Heels. And some leg separation in that ginger as well, but does connect it. Let's see this. Nice full from 
Emery Samino. A little leg separation in the air, but nice dynamics, good distance on that vault. A little wiggle of the feet at the landing, kind of yeah. unsure. Yeah, a couple of form breaks throughout that uh, bar routine, but solid job overall. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I've seen her be cleaner on bars, but let's take a look. Yeah, you can see Sami having that uh, little leg separation off the table, but nice chest position on landing. Now I'm going to sound like a broken record. Little leg separation in that dismount. And as you said, you know, it looked like she had that landing a little it bit did. more secure. Not and sure I'm what curious happened. what the judges will do, because to me that almost looked like two steps. She took yeah. a step back, but then she took another step as she was saluting, which means that she didn't really have full yep. control. So I will be curious to see what the judges do on that dismount specifically. All right, Corey Shinohara. And huge dynamics on that Yurchenko full. And she comes from Brescians, um, home of Kaja Hislop, Lily Dean, both UNC alums, known, and of course, Alicia Sacramoni, uh, Quinn, and Allie Raisman known for their power, but wow, she really got, yeah, nice dynamics. She just needs to work on controlling that a little more. And it's so great to see her. She was injured last season, was not able to compete. So great to see her in the lineup. She is working a couple other events as well, so may see those next season. Absolutely, and that, I mean, if she continues to do that vault, I'm gonna say, add the hat. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sarah Garrett. Towson. And yeah, a lot of these athletes struggling with the leg separation on the Ginger, which is difficult to correct. You really have to work on correcting that in off season, but she did a good job of continuing momentum through that. Absolutely, just her dismount left. Wow, you know, she flung that out a little bit. I didn't think she, she was did. gonna be able to stick it, but. I didn't either, but her feet found it, and Relative. I think she was a little shocked yeah. that she stuck the landing. She's still surprised. <laughs> All right, we missed Julia Noer on the vault, so we'll take a quick look here in the replay. And just, again, really nice dynamics. Not the best block I've seen her get off the table, but she's just, she's so consistent for the Tar Heels. I'm so impressed with her in her freshman um, campaign. And one of those athletes that could also upgrade to that one and a half. We'll see if she does it later in her career. Absolutely, and for those that are watching at home, I think one thing that, you know, Christina has mentioned a couple times, these leg separations on some of the bar releases, the stuck landings on the vault. As you start tuning into the schools in the top 10, particularly tomorrow afternoon with Michigan, you will not see any of that. And Jay Weil there on vault. Nice front pike. You know, she that it has been a little bit un inconsistent for her this season. So good to see her. Put, let's take another look on replay here. Nice pike position. Just a little knee bend as she comes in for landing. But I like the nice tight pike position she has. Also training that front pike half that starts out of the 10.0. Absolutely. All right, we'll take a look at Clara Hong, second team All Eagle. And th you'll just see what I'm talking about, these gorgeous lines. Look at that right on top of the bar. Beautiful Pike Jaeger. I love how she maintains her toe point throughout that. I think you asked if I made up the word swingfulness last yes. time we com uh, commentated together. But I think she does a great job at just showing how the routines are actually supposed to swing and you're not supposed to muscle on everything. So there are a lot of gymnasts that they fight through it because they're so strong. Yes. She truly swings and it really just flows and you can see it in her skills. I still think swingfulness is not a word, but maybe that's your trademark I'm, now, I'm, Rachel. I'm going You're with owning it. it. <laughs> if, if swingfulness does exist, she has it. Let's put absolutely, it that way. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, just one of those, as you say, natural bar swingers. Um, and does this really tricky double front dismount. It is a blind landing and comes so close to sticking it. But she was struggling with that a little bit during warm-up, so nice to see her hone that in. That step will just be a half attempt. Yep, just a small, small move of the foot. All right, we've got two more on the uneven bars. Well, the Tar Heels are midway through this competition, so we've still got Grace Valancourt and Amy Stewart for the Tar Heels.
for the for Towson. Or for Towson, yes. sorry. I'm looking at the target. Right. <laughs> yeah, we're used to to having dual meets that alternate routines as well. So, but uh, yeah, I love Grace Valancourt on bars. Again, has really nice lines. The highlight of her routine for me is her dismount has this really beautiful double layout dismount that she really puts into the rafters. And again, you and or Towson, sorry, Towson having to make some of these last minute changes to the lineups. And they've handled it really well so far. And all you handstand nerds who are getting the side angle so you can look at the handstand angles for yourself. Love this feel. Beautiful straddle Jaeger there. Really per nice, clean connection. Handstand, no deduction there. Let's see if she can stick this dismount. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's the best That was a big one. I've seen her do clutch moment. A uh, little leg separation in the air in that double layout, but at, unlike our viewers, the judges may not be able to catch that because of where they are sitting in relation um, to the bars. So we have, we obviously benefit from all of these different angles. Um, but yeah, just really nice toe point that she maintains throughout. Here's that dismount. Yeah, you see those legs come apart in the second salto, but hangs on to that stuck landing. Yeah, and again, the judges are on the side and below that, so their angle for what they're judging is slightly different. So we've got Amy Stewart in the anchor spot, new addition to the lineup. Yeah, she has she has only competed bars once, I believe, this season, stepping in for Steph Mikasu. She's in a good position, though. All of her teammates ahead of her have hit their routines, so she is in a position where she can really compete free. And you know, this it's a really difficult position, but these athletes do train for this in case it happens. I think it's a smart decision of the Towson coaching staff, you know, um, to rest Steph, given that she had a, a kind of funky fall on beam, you know, because they want to plan for competing tomorrow. Absolutely. And I, I think that is a smart decision. So assuming they get in, this is where they need to be. Oh, gosh. So again, Amy Stewart just stepping in, unfortunately. I mean, just a, a fraction of an inch yeah. too far on that release yeah. move. She had her fingertips on. Yeah. But you know, Towson is in a good place. They um, will be able to, oh gosh. They will be able to drop her score. Absolutely. And she, again, Towson warmed up ro the rotation with other competitors. Right. And so Amy Stewart did not actually get to get to warm up the uneven bars. She had 30 seconds during their touch warm up to try to get warmed up and Absolutely. put her routine together. So And like I said, always a fan of putting the gymnast health first. If there's any doubt, you gotta pull those athletes from the lineup. And the first five athletes hit, hit their routines. Great job. Absolutely. So that concludes rotation number two. We are midway through this competition and again i feel like we are neck and neck between north carolina and towson we're going to come back towson's going to be on the balance beam unc will be on the floor exercise you are watching women's college gymnastics on espn plus
Welcome back to the Raleigh Regional on ESPN Plus. This is women's college gymnastics round one of the regional qualifications on the way to nationals. We've got a great lineup between North Carolina and Towson. You can see their vault. They ended in a dead tie. The differentiator right now of two tens took place on the uneven bars. Five hit routines for both teams. Both teams ended up taking a fall. And you can see we are down to the wire. We've got a 2 10 differentiation. We're going to take a quick look at some of the top teams that will be competing this weekend. Number three, the Michigan Wolverines coming in as the top seeded team to qualify to round three of the regionals and then compete again on into the national championship. We've also got the LSU Tigers, some of their gymnasts in our audience today. And one in particular that uh, you see on your screen there, that's Sammy Durante. That is uh, Dana Durante's daughter. So Always it's a, fun. It's a family affair um, here at regionals. I know I talked to Dana. She was so excited that they um, got placed in the same regional and they are with a couple of her LSU teammates. Uh, certainly favorites to yes. advance um, to the national championship. You get, to, get to coach and watch your daughter. Exactly. Um, though LSU is going to face some really difficult competition for Missouri. Missouri beat LSU at SECs. They've beaten LSU a couple times. So I would not be surprised if Missouri came in to upset. Absolutely. So and out of get, those teams. You can see the resemblance between uh, Dana and Sammy. Very, yes, 100%. Uh, yeah. Uh, but great, yeah, great for them to be here together. Yeah, so we've got uh, LSU ranked sixth in the country. So you've got Michigan number three, LSU number six, Missouri number 11, um, UCLA, sorry, number 14 there. And UCLA, of course, can't count them out as a spoiler. They've had a really difficult season, um, but you could definitely push some of those teams. Absolutely, and we're going to take a look. A lot of side-by-sides this go-round just because beam and floor do take a little bit longer. On the floor exercise, we've got Hannah Nam on balance beam, Lauren Bolin. Oh, and hangs on to that back handspring layout step out. A little shaky on the balance beam so far. I will say the nice thing though, Towson gets it out of the way. They can end on floor, which is that you know strong, powerful, fun event. UNC, they get really amped up on floor and then they've got to really calm those nerves back down to end on beam, which did not bode so well for them in their Eagle Conference Championship. Yes, as you mentioned, still lots of gymnastics left. Hannah Nam getting UNC off to a nice start here on floor, though. She's got a difficult pass coming up here. She's going to do that one and a half to front full. Tricky CC connection. One and a half, front full. She does a nod to herself. <laughs> you can tell she was happy about that. Dances out of it a little bit off center yeah. there, but stays inbound. So everything is good all around. Yeah, and you know, I think Hannah Nam, really experienced, consistent athlete. And as you said, just a little bit off balance. Let's take another look here. You know, a lot of athletes do the one and a half to front layout, but she does this tricky one and a half to front full. And yeah, you're right. It was just a little bit off balance, but handles it like a champ. Absolutely. And that's a lot of twisting in one. Yes. Pass. but that's why she's in the leadoff position. You know, and that routine look, looks pretty identical week to week, and that's what you want for your leadoff. Absolutely. This is a, a first look at Lauren Keener on the balance beam. It's always a little nerve wracking when the judges take too long to come up with a score. Yeah, and you know, there were a number of breaks in that um, opening routine from Bolin, so Though she did not fall, there were probably, there were three breaks that were a couple of tenths each. So that's a score they're gonna wanna drop. I'm seeing a 9-3-5 from one of the judges. 9-2 overall is being flashed. And that's tough when it's a hit, you know, what I would consider a hit routine, meaning there were no falls. A 9-2 yeah. typically indicates that there is a fall. So all of those execution errors 
adding up to essentially a fall. Yeah, I think that's the thing is, although she didn't fall, I, pro I would not classify that as a hit routine just because there were so many of those breaks. But Lauren Keener is somebody that can get them back on track. She is lovely on this event. We saw there Keener, her high of a 9.875 on this event. And very secure in that backhand spring layout step out. You see the TU, that's choreographed not only in the floor routines, but also in the beam routines. Handles that tough three quarters well. Tricky to land on the side like that. And we've got a 9.775 that came in for Nam. And makes that connection. Some form errors there. It was a little low on that front toss on the landing position. Should be setting up for the dismount. And you know, th that I've seen her be a little bit crisper, but great routine to get them back on track. Absolutely. And this this round, round one is such a nerve wracking spot because you you want so bad for your team to make it into round two that you put a lot of pressure on, on yourself. Shaylin St. Bryce for the Tar Heels. And a little under rotated on that Wolf one and a half, I believe. But nice opening first pass. And so far, Talzin leaving the door open for this UNC team to really come back and, and make a play. And we always love to see the teammates getting into it, the side choreography there. And oh, somebody's hit their teammate in the face there doing the side <laughs> choreo. You know, it gets athletic. All the fun. I say? Oh, and just looked a little surprised on landing there. Maybe wasn't quite ready for it, but she handled it. And the difference between, I will say, the regional and the national competition is, it happened in conference too, for those that watch, the team is corralled. You no longer right. see the team being able to spread out around the right. side of the floor or stand right beside the balance beam. And Which is helpful for us, because we get a clear view of the it event. Is helpful, it is helpful for us, but at the same time, from the gymnast perspective, you get used to your teammates being right there, that it that it is a little odd when your teammates can't be right next to you on the floor. And or here's that double pike. Yeah, you know, she just kind of bounced out of it, but managed to control it. Yeah, most definitely. Like you said, just a little a little unsure that, oh, here's yeah. the landing. So we've got Grace at Valancourt for Towson. And then Brianna Greenlow will be up next for the Tar Heels. And that tricky front from standing into the Makes beam it jump. So I love it. For our viewers that are new to, to uh, Rachel Garland, beam was not her favorite event, I will say. No, and I could never do a standing front. If I did make it around, like my butt was like two inches off the floor. She's handling this really well, though. Nice back handspring layout step out. And does the tricky switch switch combination. Maybe a little shy on that second uh, switch split. But overall, pretty nice job, that full turn. Season high for Grace as well, 9.875, so same as Lauren Keener previously. And Gainer full there, nice job. I, I thought that it was a very clean routine. Is that going to be a new season high? Probably not. No. Yeah, but probably that not. Is, that was a great opportunity for Towson. So fantastic handspring layout step out for Acro Series. Great gainer full off the side and just a small scooch of the feet on that landing. Absolutely, and she was the one that stepped in to Steph Makasu's role on beam. So great job for her. She has competed beam, as you mentioned, on and off this season, had that 9.875. Um, so has exp as competitive experience, but a but again, nice hit there. Didn't get to warm up balance beam. She got a 30 second touch yes. at, the, at the, you know, while we were on a break, that was when the team overall gets a four minute touch, so she roughly gets 30 seconds of that. All right, Brianna Greenlow. Well, that's the best double pike I've seen her do this season. She means business. When this could potentially be the last meet of the season, why not lay it out there? Exactly.
short of split there in that first element. But this middle pass, I absolutely love it. Check this out. Punch front into the two and a half. Oh. oh. Just too, too much energy. Yeah. And the hard part on that is that is a tenth off the average of the score. So the judges calculate everything as normal. I'm going to throw out a number. Say it's a 9-8. All of a sudden, that 9-8 drops immediately to a 9-7 because of that foot out of bounds. And when there's only a 2 tenth separation between these teams, that tenth out of bounds can, can be the nail biter. Really nice control of that last pass, though, that one and a half to front layout. And you know, it's interesting because neither one of these teams are at their best. We've seen both of these teams do better this season. Yep. We're going to take a look here. So this one and a half. Yeah, just shoulders too far in front of her hips there, has to take that step forward. Yeah, nice control here, though. This pass was great. Yeah. And I almost, it's funny, when she did that last pass, I was thinking, why did she do the back handspring on the second pass? I almost wonder if she should just go front through round off two and a half. Right. And omit the back handspring to not even worry about it. Well, a lot we'll, of gymnasts we'll have. We'll talk with the coaches about our recommendations for routine construction yes. after the routines, after we gotta we gotta talk to the, the people that come up with some of the schedules, yes. the location. We have lots of ideas. Oh um, nobody asks. Yeah. That's okay. We'll just keep talking about gymnastics. Exactly. Until they do. Exactly. All right, and back over to Balance Beam. This is Jenna White. And she is stunning on Beam. She is an individual qualifier. Again, has that second round, that second round spot secured. The highlight of her routine to me is in the middle of her routine, she has a really tricky combination that garners her five tenths of bonus. She does this switch split leap to a layout step out split jump. So rarely see. Um, those standing layout step outs and she's just and she's very aggressive on beam which I love to see And here she's gearing up for that series here check this out. There's the switch lay oh and she decided not to go for the split jump it was just a little off on that layout step out Aerial to back handspring as her series here. And similar to her teammates, a season high of a 9.875. Great leap jump there, more than 180 degree yeah, split. A nice there. height on that, too. Getting ready for a dismount here. Elizabeth Colton on floor. Sticks the dismount. Nice routine. Again, I've seen her be cleaner there. You know, Towson had a great beam rotation at Eagles, not quite hitting that year. So again, it's gonna, it's still up in the air. Towson had that two and a half tenth leave. They've they've let the door open. And really nice control on that double back by Elizabeth Colton. And you know, a lot of athletes in the NCAA not getting their heads back on those ring leaps. Elizabeth Colton, no question. Beautiful ring position there. Oh, again, just a little extra bounce on that pass. Just gorgeous stretch in that switch side popa. She is definitely just one of the gym. Like the line and the technique is so precise. It's always just so fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah, we, you know, just can't say enough good things about her gymnastics. So, you know, did have a little bit of uh, extra bounce in that second pass. But that, um, yeah, that double back off the top, I think that's the best I've ever seen her do. Let's take another look here. 
Look how her legs are together in that double back. Great control. And here's what, yeah, here's that switch side Copa. Just beautiful stretch. Again, those splits more past 180. The, the 180 is where they have to be. They don't get extra credit for going past that. It just kind of shows off their flexibility, but it does make for a gorgeous leap pass. And speaking of beautiful form, Clara Hong here. Does that difficult split full? You don't see that very often in NCAA in gymnastics or in elite, to be honest. You saw their all eagle team member. It just has her dismount left here. Wow, really nice job there for Clara Hong. Again, her future so bright in NCAA gymnastics. Absolutely gorgeous to watch. Take another look here at the dismount. His feet glued to the ground. And nice chest position as well. That's what we want to see is for the athletes to be landing with their chest upright. So in the final spot for the Tigers will be Emerson Hurst. And then we've got two additional competitors on floor for the Tar Heels, Julia Noer and Juliana Wheel. And a 9.85 coming in for Elizabeth Poulton. And Julia Noer, one of those athletes that can get um, her, that can get into that 9.9 range. Big power on this double pipe. Oh, no. Oh. You saw that red flag go up there in the corner of your screen. That means she did step out of bounds. It lets both judges know that there will be a deduction taken at the end. Yeah, and you know, it was sky high, but just couldn't control that landing. And we've talked in the past that this NC State floor is very springy. Yes. The Tar Heels have competed on it. I, they've probably been here at least twice, if not three times already this season. But you add that in with some adrenaline and it, it gets to be a little bit, a little bit nerve wracking. Yeah. And Emerson Hurst in, in her being routine, beautiful athlete. She did just before we got on camera with her, had a big wobble. Oh no. Oh gosh, had a wobble on her full turn. Pretty big wobble. Um, yeah. And then just off there on her series. Too bad because she's gorgeous on beam. Yeah, and again, we talked at the top of the beam rotation with Lauren Bolin. Although she did not necessarily fall, some of those execution errors and that 9-2 score was what they were hoping to drop. Not going to be the case with the fall out of Emerson Hurst. So they will likely have to count that 9-2. Yeah. You know, Julia Noer, a little bit of extra power on that um, that double pike, but otherwise really strong routine. And I gotta say, I love her performance quality on floor. Emerson Hurst gearing up for her dismount here. A little under-rotated. So definitely a tough rotation for the Tigers. UNC knows what it's like to be in that spot. We're going to take a quick look at Julia's first tumbling pass, and you'll be able to see right on the, the edge, she steps across, and that yeah. foot just goes out of that white line. Yeah, because actually it wasn't the, the foot that she stepped back on no. the lunge with the when it's out of balance. It was She was just off balance trying to hold on to that. Off. And had she stepped on the line, we'd be fine. Line is in. The in line gymnastics. is in. The line is in in gymnastics. All right, so we've got one final competitor for the Tar Heels. Some last minute coaching advice. Yeah, and Jay Weil, one of the, again, one of those athletes, you talk about UNC losing these two powerhouse all-arounders, Hallie Thompson um, and Lolly Dekanoitsa early in the season. Um, you know, Jay Weil had competed last season on floor some. One of those athletes stepped up into a regular position into the lineup. For her, really, she has really nice tumbling. It's going to be an issue of controlling it. Um, she's got two of those tricky double salto passes, does both the double back and the double pike. So neither team so far having a knockout rotation. A couple out of bounds for the Tar Heels. 
some major executions for the Tigers and the final competitor for the Tar Heels on court. No issue with going out of bounds because she does not do that back handspring. Yeah, exactly. There you go. That's the composition you wanted. But yeah, hangs on to that. You know, had a little slide that front foot, but nice job overall. I almost wish when I competed, someone just said, take the back handspring out, because I was always one of those that was like in the corner on my on some of my landings. And, more than smart, just take the back handspring out. And yet, so while looking to replace that 9575 from Greenlow. So far, so good. I'm going to call it now, but I'll knock on wood. Wow. Really nice control on that double pike. Could tell a little bit gas, not nearly as big of a tumbling pass as the first one or what we saw her do in warm-ups and touch. But again, the, the goal is the hit routine. And that is something I would call, that was a hit routine. And UNC is going to, you can see on in your box there, they were already ahead before counting wild score. They are going to move to beam in control of this meet. Absolutely. We'll take a look back at her two double salto passes. So nice double tuck. And that's something that, oh, you can see that she was losing her balance there a little bit. Coach Durante had been working with her to make sure her tuck was looking a little pike, so they really worked throughout the season. I had a chance to go visit UNC Gymnastics practice on Sunday as they prepared for this meet, um, and was working on really having that tight tuck position so that it wouldn't risk being counted as a double pike twice, and she did a good job there. Yes, that was definitely a tuck and a pike. Yes. Uh, well, that concludes, concludes our third rotation, so you got a, a kind of a little glimpse in the bottom corner there. UNC at this point does have the lead, we are going to come back in just a few minutes with the fourth and final rotation with round one of the Raleigh Regional. You're watching ESP or you're watching ESPN Plus Women's College Gymnastics.
Welcome back to Women's College Gymnastics. You are watching the fourth and final rotation in the round one of the Raleigh Regional. We've got a great meet between North Carolina and Towson. You can see from the start of the meet, we have now swung three tenths in the other direction, whereas Towson had a two and a half tenth lead, and now UNC leads by a little over three tenths. UNC is going to finish up their meet onto the balance beam. Towson on the floor exercise. Christina, tell us a little bit. Towson kind of faltered a little bit on beam. You've got their scores there. Yeah, this was a rough rotation for Towson. No way around it. I mean, Lauren Bolin in that leadoff spot did not have a fall, but several uh, major breaks in her routine. And, you know, had to count not only that 9-2, but also some subpar scores there, the 9-6-2-5. And you know this is the this is the interesting thing. All season we say, you know, it's not about the wins and losses; it's about the scores. But for this meet, it it's is about survive and advance, right? So it's sudden death. You know, you're looking at a uh, floor. You know, North Carolina has been better on floor as well. You see Bree Greenlow going out of bounds there, but they they managed to contain. It was just a more smaller mistakes as compared to Towson having some bigger mistakes. So the interesting thing is now I sound like probably not the smartest analyst because at the beginning I said I think it's going to take a mid 196 to win this meet. Neither one of these teams is at their best that we've seen them this season. So we're going to see the winner of this beat score in the uh, 195s. But still, that's what you, it's just surviving and advancing. And then they're going to move on to that uh, round of 32. So, you know, UNC, this is tricky because UNC Beam has been a pretty good event for them this season. However, as you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, they had to count a fall at Eagles. So it's really going to be on them to kind of set the ship right. There was, when I went to UNC Gymnastics practice on Sunday, Coach Durante was having them work a lot of specific skills and get their confidence up. And that's one of the things she really underscored to me. Absolutely. So we've got Lauren Bolin starting off on the floor exercise. Nice double back there. And these gymnasts, whoever whoever does win this afternoon, they have to turn around and compete again tomorrow. So their bodies don't really get that much of a break. Back handspring layout, step out for Emery Summy, hangs on there. Yeah, another thing that Rachel and I would change about uh, the NCAA format, have a break day for these round one teams. But we're not in charge, so. Clean full turn there for Emery Summy. I thought she was a little bit off in the on the Rudy board, looked, but it looked a little a little funky. Hung on to that landing though. You know, Emery Summy being a little tentative on beam here, but hasn't had any major breaks. Again, kind of an awkward landing on that side. Uh, was it a side aerial? Was it a side summy? I, I think it was a side summy, yeah. But, you know, good for uh, Bolin and the dismount for summy. Wow. She's really been nailing that this season. You know, again, just a little, some little things here and there. It wasn't the most fluid performance, but got them off to a strong start. And uh, kudos to Lauren Bolin because she had to recover from that tough routine on beam, started house and off uh, on a good note. Absolutely. We're going to take a couple, uh, look at a couple of replays here. So Lauren Bolin. That front layout to the front full. Maybe, a, you know, it was a little off balance in that landing. But this landing, textbook right there, you can land with your feet apart. You just have to be able to bring your heels together for no deduction. Absolutely. So some final high fives and hugs from the teammates. Jamie Shear are going to be up second for the Tar Heels along with Jenna Wheat for the Tigers. And looks like a 9-8 coming in for Bolin. And again, another difference from regional play versus regular season is we now have four judges. And so the way they actually calculate the scores, all four judges turn their scores around. You toss out the high, you toss out the low, and you average the two in the middle. It gets even more complicated at nationals when there's six judges. 
Yeah, and we're, we're seeing some pretty wide splits here. I think the judges need to get their judging a little tighter, to be honest, but um, Jamie Shearer on beam here. And Jenna Weed starting on floor as well. Oh, nice composure there from Shearer. She was a little off on that back handspring layout. And Weed, such a powerful tumbler. Yes, typically some very big tumbling. Again, UNC still looking a little hesitant. So, you know, similar to Towson on the balance beam. Though I would say UNC hasn't had any major breaks yet. Yes. And this is a cool combination, this dismount. Check this out. The front walkover into the gainer full. Again, you know, just as you said, some hesitancy throughout, but pretty performance from yes. Jamie Shearer. She was not coming off. Looked like a sigh of relief at yes, the end Yes, exactly. <laughs> and she was one of the athletes that fell at Eagles. Weeds getting ready for her final pass here. Wow. That is control on a double pike right Absolutely. there. And she's pumped about that one. It is not over, folks. No, Towson left the door open, but they are, they are fighting for sure. Take a look at this first tumbling pass. And I mean, this is the power I was talking about that she showcases that front through into the double back. Was a little bit off on that on that landing, but and yeah, I just think this is a cool combination. I don't know anybody else who's doing this in NCAA. I find it hard to connect those two skills. Yeah, yeah. But she does it. Yeah. And she and that she has struggled with that connection. That was pretty that, that was probably the best I've seen her do so far this season. So again, so far, still about a two-tenth battle between these two teams. Hannah Nam is going to be up next for the Tar Heels and Grace Valencourt for Towson. We'll talk about big tumbling. Grace, I believe it's her opening pass, her double back. Yeah. I, I feel like some of these like seven feet tall basketball players yeah, exactly. can walk underneath her. Yes, absolutely. And I spoke to Coach Durante, Hannah Nam, capable of doing that triple series, the back handspring layout, step out, layout, step out. Coach Durante said she probably wouldn't be doing it here because she can still start from a 10 without it. So we'll see what she goes for. Back handspring layout, step out. I think that's a good decision, given safe, how close safe this decision, is. Yes, just a little wiggle of that front foot on that layout step out, but absolutely the safe decision. Nice stretch in those dance elements. Again, I know I sound like a broken record. I would love to see some better positionality in these cat leaps. Had a huge double back. Yeah. And just does it out of that round off, too. Love it. But again, even for just the two skills, she gets very close to that edge. Yes. Wow. Drills that dismount. A great routine out of Hannah. Not, I mean, not her best, but a very, very clean couple, very minor errors here and there. Yeah, we're seeing a really gritty performance from UNC on beam. Wow. You know, she was, she was so high on that one and a half. Almost had to whip that front layout yes. around. Two passes back to back. Always takes a lot of extra energy. And you know, ends with that jump. Just a little bit of travel yes. in that jump. Her um, chest a little, a little down, kind of. Yeah. Kept the center balance off. And so you want to see the second salto rise. She was so high, in almost too high in that first one and a half that she had to whip that uh, layout around. And then that nice stuck landing. Yeah. 
kind of punctuation point on a really good routine. Great job for Hannah Nam there. 9825. I think I think that's right. Yeah, yeah, I think that and, and we don't always agree with the judges, but I think that's about right. Um and we're gearing up for some very high scoring potential routines here for UNC and for Towson. Um, you're having a look at Elizabeth Colton there, uh, was a first team All-American last year on beam. Was UNC's first first team All-American since Courtney Bumpers. Many of you may remember the name. Uh, floor NCAA floor champion. But Elizabeth is really exquisite on you see there, this that, event. That 9975, like I, <laughs> I would so love for her to get a 10. Yeah, and I have to say a couple of times I have seen routines from her that I think should have gone 10. And I think, to be frank, if she were wearing a different leotard, she would have gotten one by now. But here, we, this is gorgeous. This back handspring layout step out. Look at the stretch. Look at the finish position. I, I mean, it, it's like taking a walk in the park for her. It's stunning. And the toe point, that's a cat leap right there, folks. The way that she lifts through and turns out her feet in the cat leap. And we've got Clara Hong starting. And these are beautiful athletes Two back side to by back. Side, yes. Yeah. Great job on that aerial beat. That's the one place where Elizabeth Colton sometimes struggles, but connected that really well. Full turn right on Releve there. And Clara Hong is going to show off some of the similar lines to Elizabeth Colton, just gorgeous twisting form. Let's see if Colton can stick her dismount here. Wow. I, I didn't want to speak too soon. I, I did not find any places for execution in that routine. I'm sure the judges oh. did. Oh, and too bad, Clara Hong, just some extra juice there. They always say gymnastics is 80% mental. It, it may even be a little bit more mental than that, but you throw in nerves, you, you know, kind of that desire to get to round two. Uh, it's really coming out on floor today, especially when, again, we've talked about how bouncy this floor is. You've got to be able to control that power. And great control in that whip half to front full. That was a really big final tumbling yeah. pass. I mean, you know, again, just lovely qualities, could not control. That first pass just had that big step forward, that difficult front double full, but absolutely gorgeous. Oh, so close. 9925 for Elizabeth so Colton. Close. And look there, at there, there was nothing to take on that acro series. Absolutely. And yeah, just a little off center on that. I mean, yeah, again, I think in a different setting she could she could have um gone 10. Same thing when she got her 9975, I believe they were at LIU and I was I probably agreed with the 10.0 uh, judge there, but yeah, great job for Elizabeth Colton. I think that she is like a underdog to qualify for nationals on beam. I agree. I would love to see her make it to nationals. Uh, Julia Noer on beam now for the Tar Heels. Another great beam worker. Wow, look at that front toss. I mean, I don't think anyone in NCAA is doing it like that, finishing the chest position like she does. Mm -hmm. And I had jinxed her earlier this season setting up for it, so I wasn't going to do it again. So exactly. I'm glad we got through it. But um, yeah, just so powerful in that uh, front toss. And look at this tricky combination, the beat jump into the switch half. Just a little bit off center, but finesse the landing. Absolutely, and like you said, it is a tough combination. That beat jump into anything. Normally you do the beat jump on the end yeah. of the connection. And the switch half, one of those E-rated elements, so she gets two tenths of bonus for doing that. Gosh, she is such a competitor. You can tell she was stoked about that one. Yes. And I have to say, watching UNC in practice, and by the way, I would have loved to go to a Towson in practice, but I live 10 <laughs> minutes away from the UNC facility. A little harder to travel. Right, yeah, so, um, but Julia Noer, such a focused athlete in practice, and yeah, does that tricky combination. She has great air awareness. Look at the way she sinks into that landing. Such a great routine.
She's really trying to just wrap everything up to guarantee North Carolina makes it as a team tomorrow and yes. not her as an individual. Absolutely. This is Amy Stewart. And Amy Stewart, career high here of 995. So she is, can't put up a big number here. And Towson's going to need it. They've got a 410 deficit right now. A 9 9 coming in for Noer. We've got a couple nine nines out of the Tar Heel so far on the floor. We've got a few nine eight pluses for Towson. Just under rotated there. And Brianna Greenlow on the left of your screen in the final spot. Amy Stewart wrapping up for Towson. We've got final competitor is Nikki Bukowski. You control that aerial nicely there. Brianna Greenlow, again, one of those athletes stepping into the lineup after Lolly Dekanoitz's injury. And she has been inconsistent on beam this season. So nice to see her working through this routine nicely. <laughs> and a great beam rotation yeah. for the Tar Heels. They're looking at dropping a 9-7 at this point. Yeah. I'm guessing they're going to do and, it on, on that routine. Yeah. And, Again, it's their highest ranked event, and they, they came out and showed us why yeah. this afternoon. Let's take a quick look back here at Bree's Acro series. Backhand spring layout, step out just a little bit off center, but again, managed to handle that. Let's take a look. Yep, again, and just a little. Yep, a drop of the shoulder, a, yeah. a shuffle of the yes. foot. Yeah. Another 985 for Towson out of Amy Stewart. So Nikki Burkowski, the final competitor. We said today was going to be a close one, and it's really going to come down to the wire on this. There you see Nikki's season high at 9.925, so we know that she can post one of those big scores. And I believe that at this point, unofficially, UNC has done it. I believe this is mathematically locked. Um, unfortunately, my stats are not updating as quickly as I would like, but I believe from my napkin math that <laughs> um, this is locked. I, I, I think you're correct. I think it really comes down to Towson having to count that 9-2 on the balance beam, whereas, you know, let's, let's call it a fall. They had to count a fall today, and the Tar Heels did not. Tumbling pass yeah. out of uh, that was a, I mean that was a great way to finish the yes. routine. Yeah, you know, like we said, it is. You can see UNC there survive in advance again. Not their best performance of the season, but they are going on to the round of 32. Um, 
again, unofficial, but you can see it looks pretty official to them. Coach Dana Durante, what a victory for her in her first season. And, got to, you know, like I said, I think being able to visit with this coaching staff, the three of them working really well together. Uh -huh. And I love to see an all-female coaching staff. Towson had a great season. You know, this performance was not their best. Uh, but second in Eagles, the highest they've ever scored, they've ever finished in Eagles. Second regional, straight regional yep. appearance. Had to deal with the unexpected um, changes to the lineup after Steph Mikasu got pulled. So a lot to be proud of for this Towson team. Absolutely. Um, and still, still they do have an individual yes. that will be in the sessions tomorrow as as an individual just not part of the team which is always hard absolutely the future is bright for um for towson gymnastics you know i think for unc if we think forward to what's going to um what they're going to face in that semifinal, it's going to be really difficult for them to get out of that semifinal. But, you know, we always say there's no defense in gymnastics. So really, it's just about them going out there and performing their best. If they can go out and score in the 196s tomorrow, I think they can be it feeling in a really good place. You know, they're going against Michigan, UCLA. By the way, Maryland could be a spoiler in this semifinal. Um, so I think Maryland has been having a great season. Um, you know, they have, they've been, they haven't, um, they've been on the cusp, they're not quite there. UCLA has, you know, they're scoring. Definitely they could be in that, um, you know, in the mix, or they could also have an off day and um, Maryland can upset them. UNC hasn't quite been with them scoring wise so far this season. But again, I think making it to this round of 32, a huge victory um, for UNC who has not been to the regionals since 2017. Absolutely, it's gonna be some stiff competition tomorrow. You see there four of the top 15 schools in the country and then UNC filling up that fourth and final spot in the second round. This will be in the late regional. So there you've got the final scores, a half point difference between North Carolina and Towson. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. The first round is at one o'clock, second round at seven o'clock. And that will conclude our competition in the Raleigh Regional round one. You have been watching Women's College Gymnastics on ESPN+.